great card we had this past Sunday. The team of the Overboys, who you bought in from Texas. That's right. I brought these guys from Texas. They are the Texas Tag Team Champions. The best tag team Texas has to offer. And let me tell you something about the state of Texas. There are two things that come out of Texas. Don't say it. Don't say it. Steers and... No, I was going to say Joey Corman and Samir, the Overboys. Well, Kamish, here we see the number one contenders for the PWA Tag Titles, New Era, Amazing Crews. Uh, I can't see them yet. Have, have they gotten up on their step stools yet? Well, you know, so again, we're going to start with the short jokes, huh? The short jokes? Listen, we are here. We are joined. It, it's your pleasure, Chris Irish, to have here at ringside, assisting us in this commentary, Mr. Electricity himself, Jerry Ryan. That's right, and Chris Irish, you can just call me champ for short if, if Mr. Electricity is too long for you. No, I, I think I can manage Mr. Electricity. In all deference, though, you, you are the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, they're partners. Brought to the PWA by the Commissioner Patrick J. Kelly III. That's me. Well, that would be you? That's me. Well, I should make a correction there. Obviously, they're not their partners. They're their opponents. They are their opponents. And these guys, the tag champions of the entire state of Texas. You can't ask for anything better than these two. I got to tell you, I was extremely impressed with the uh, ring work of these two gentlemen, uh, Joey Corman and, of course, Samir from the great state of Texas, as you already mentioned there, uh, Patrick J. Kelly III. Not only, not only are they the Texas Tag Team Champions, but they have wrestled in NWA Wildside in Atlanta, Georgia. They've done TV tapings up there. These guys are up-and-comers, and, -comers, and uh, it was really, really a thrill to have them here at the PWA. It's not raining here, boys. Hey, it's not raining here, boys. What's with the raincoats here? Oh, what, what, what is he making fun of their raincoats? Well, the, the three of them look like a trio of Chiquita bananas. Hey, that's that style, uh, Chris Iris. That's something you would know nothing about. Well, you know, uh, raincoats aside, I, I will say that these gentlemen carry quite a uh, weighty reputation with them. Uh, of course, Joey Corman trained by Killer Tim Brooks out of Texas, and uh, Samir uh, in the kickboxing Muay Thai shorts. His partner there. Now they've also uh, fought against each other quite a bit in the Texas area. Well, you know, you have to. We have to point out here that Mays and Cruz fought against each other quite a bit when they first entered the PWA, and they have turned into a, a relatively decent tag team. So the same can be said for the Overboys. And of course, I battled the Black Sheep quite extensively before I joined the most elite group in professional wrestling today and became the PWA heavyweight champion as a result. That's right. You saw the light. You I, saw the light. I remember that the good old days. You know, back when back when you were nice to me and you know didn't hit me with that pipe at any every chance you got. Back when I was fake. Before I was the real me. That was back when you just catered to the whims of the fans. Yeah, look where it got me, nowhere. All right, we've got Samir in the ring going up against Justin Cruz. A lot of parallels between these two teams, as we noted before. Similar size, similar body weight. Uh, for once, I have to say, uh, Cruz has got the muscular advantage here. That is a first in the PWA. I would say he's got a size advantage, but Samir's cut up a lot better than Justin Cruz, I'd have to say. All that Muay Thai experience. That, I think, uh, all those cheeseburgers that Cruz eats probably, uh, you know, goes against them. Well, we, we won't get into talking about people's body types, Kamish. Now, I've, I've just been handed a note here. Um, yeah, okay. It appears that uh, the Overboys were wearing the raincoats for one very specific reason. They, they heard about uh, the seagull problem we have here in Pensacola, and uh, they wanted to make sure they kept their uh, wrestling attire uh, poop proof. Well, let's not ignore the match, but maybe if you didn't feed those seagulls so much Alka-Seltzer, we wouldn't have that problem. Nice short power bomb there from Justin Cruz, I have to say, and some great agility also shown by Joey Corman there momentarily. And uh, Corman going to take a powder here, begging off. He, he's not begging, he's holding his head. And apparently uh, Justin Cruz uh, used the hair there as an advantage, pulling right. the hair of yeah, Corman. Yeah, I, I saw him pull the hair. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the referee missed it, but I, I clearly saw him pull the hair. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Uh, you're probably going to tell me next that the, the pair of them uh, 
have a flowing mane of hair like the Freebirds, right? I wouldn't compare him with the Freebirds, but you know, maybe Jeff Jarrett in his long hair days. Apparently, Samir uh, is requesting the presence of the shorter of the two lawn gnomes, uh, Johnny Mays of New York. Well, you know, this is, uh, it, but, you know, I don't understand why New Era is wearing the camouflage pants. I mean, that's, are they trying to be uh, sneaky and stealthy? Is that the whole point of it? I can't see them personally. They're wearing the camouflage. Uh, well, here we're going to see a nice little display of uh, martial arts footwork here from both gentlemen. Okay, guys, it's a wrestling match. Hey, come on, let's get on with this, guys. Johnny Mays showing the extent of his karate knowledge. Well, uh, he told me he learned that at the Wax On, Wax Off school. Nice go behind there from Samir, takes his man down to the mat. Yeah, that, that's just good technical wrestling right there. Uh, on both parts, I must admit. You know what I like best about doing these uh, shows week in and week out here, Patrick J. Kelly? What's that, Mr. Electricity? I look forward each and every week to commentating my own matches. That is the greatest thing, the technical marvel, to be able to sit here and blow for blow tell you exactly what was going through my mind while I'm kicking the crap out of some poor peon. You know, the funny thing is, is people pay like 20 bucks to have that feature added on a DVD. Here, you're getting it for free at the PWA. Hey, you can't beat it. What a deal. Call the match, Chris. What are we paying you for? Nice split-legged moonsault there. And Mays, well, we're going to see the team of the Overboys here heading to the outside. And, of course, the uh, the pro New Era crowd getting behind the great man. Well, that's obviously because these are, these are Pensacola idiots, ignorant of how great the Overboys truly are. May's going to take a rest here because, uh, well, let's be honest, these guys are stalling. Stalling? No, they're just trying to rally the fans behind them. They're just breaking the momentum of their opponents, Chris. You wouldn't understand ring psychology. If somebody's got things going their way on you, if they've got a flow, as we like to call it in the business, you get out of the ring, you break the momentum, and you start fresh and poke them in the eye. There you go. Hey, great, great technical move there by Samir. Well, the two of you definitely got a flow going here. There's, well, I'm not even going to say what's flowing out of your mouth. What are you implying? <coughs> nothing, nothing. And Samir sending him into the ropes. Nice adjustment in midair there by uh, the three foot nine uh, Johnny he's not, Mays. He's not three foot nine, folks. Hey, you know, let, let's uh, give the devil his due. Good things come in small packages, right? Well, you know, actually, I was, I was, I offered Johnny Mays a job paying him. I was going to pay him very, very good. You know, I was going to offer him a job to be uh, my lawn jockey. You know. Couldn't you shut off your phone? I mean, I know, you know, you're, you're a big time celeb now and you got to field calls from everybody, but oh, oh, this is Julia Roberts. Hold on. Yeah, Julia. No, I know you broke up with Benjamin. No, I can't go out with you on Friday. Hip toss in stereo. No. Look, I know you're upset about your breakup. And Yes, I am single, but and I know you're single. I know you're single now. Come on, PJK, just hang up on her. She's a dog. Break of the eyes there by Samir. Call Kick me later. I'm in the middle of the show. Well, now that you're done, uh, feel I I don't even know if that really was Julia Roberts fans, but uh, brain buster. Hello. Nonetheless, the commissioner being distracted didn't have the courtesy to turn off his phone. Hey, I. I, I I'm expecting important phone calls here. Well, looks like we're to see a double team maneuver here. He's the, the commissioner boys. for crying out loud. Nice double team maneuver coming up. Drop kick right to the mush. That's one of my favorites. I like that move. That is clever. I mean, I'm expecting a phone call from Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. Apparently, she wants advice about running a promotion. But I don't know what that could be about. And Corman there, he's real proud of himself, trying to flex the, uh, the biceps. 
you got to you got to comment on the great teamwork here from the over boys. They're definitely over in my eye. They, they are just tagging in and out, quick tags. You know, this is this is great tag team work. Like a well-oiled machine, Chris Irish. You know, you're like a over boys mark. What a tremendous series of moves there by the over boys. Oh, Good wow. Lord. Well, you know, that's uh, that's going to make it awfully hard to put those earphones back on. Bit of an arrogant cover there from Samir. Big clothesline by the Texan. The Muay Thai Texan. That, kind of, that has a ring to it. That's almost like the Mongolian Stomper. Gotta love the Mongolian Stomper. He's coming out of retirement, I know. You know, I'm sorry, fans. This fascination that the commissioner has with the Mongolian Stomper. You know, maybe one of these days he will show up, and uh, I think he's going to take offense to your name dropping. Duck of the clothesline and into a power slam. Nice offensive maneuver there from one half of the overboys, Joey Corman. Justin Cruz trying to come in and cheat. He, well, no, I don't think he was trying to cheat. He just fell for it. And, you know, Cruz has been around long enough not to fall for that. Snap Mayer. Submission type maneuver here by Samir. I, 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 I think I hear him saying I quit. Is he tapping out? I, I, Watch his foot. His I, foot might. He might tap well, out with yeah, his foot. Come on. Yeah, Johnny Mays is a quitter, so it wouldn't surprise me. He comes from a long line of quitters. His whole family were quitters. The dad didn't quit soon enough. You know, Mr. Electricity, you used to hang out with New Era. Of course, that was pre-Black Sheep days. Yeah, I felt sorry for him. I was trying to give him a little bit of guidance, but they don't listen. Me being the ring veteran that I am, 10 years in this great business. They, these guys can't even lace up my boots. Well, nonetheless, Corman really taking it to Mays. And uh, both of them. That's true. They've uh, been real successful in managing to keep Mays sequestered. High back body drop. Yeah, they've really done a great job of, of, of keeping Mays isolated out of his corner. But is there an echo in here? What, did you just say something? Nice double elbow there from the Overboys. Looks like we might have another double team maneuver here. Samir locking in the Boston Crab. Oh, oh my! Good night, Irene! Now that is not a legal drop kick. You don't think? But it's effective. It, I know it's effective. Boy. I remember when my grandmother kicked me there one time. That, you know, not fun. And I didn't go back for Easter eggs for quite a while, but that's another story. <laughs> we don't want to hear about your Easter eggs. So. Hard shot to the ribs there from Joey Corman, one half of the Overboys. You know, you can go to overboys.com and check them out. I did. Oh, mid-air collision. Mid-air collision by the two uh, young, short uh, tag team partner uh, people. Tag is made by the Overboys, and here comes Justin Cruz. He's a house of fire. Katie bar the door. It's a Pier 6 brawl. It's a Donnybrook. Somewhere Gordon Soley's probably rolling over in his grave. I think he is. Oh, misses oh, with the moonsault. Misses. That'll blow your knees out right there. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, oh, oh, not this. Here we go. Jesus! But just like last week, if you watch the show Thursday, fans, here I come to save the day. What are you saving? This is the black sheep all jumping new era. Hey, this is like some stuff you'd see on The Godfather. Hey, this is great. Yeah, so uh, if we're going to compare The Godfather, I guess that makes uh, C-Note Luca Brasi, huh? Well, we're making the new era an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> yeah, what's the offer? Hi, stand here while we beat the mess out of you. Oh, what? Look at this. Oh. Ow. I had to put my two cents in there. Yeah, apparently you did. And uh, Bobby Dahl and Danny Rowland, tag team champs here. Well, obviously the winners of this match are the Black Sheep, and we're going to go to our next match here. That's not fans true, momentarily. This was a win by disqualification. New Era gets the win. Wrap it up for us here, Chris. Well, there's really not much more to say except that you guys, again, Pearl Harbor, New Era, and that's it.
great match. I got to say that they did match New Era, hole for hole, maneuver for maneuver. But again, the Black Sheep getting involved. Well, they got involved after the match. They just came in to help their their good friends, the Overboys, celebrate. That's all. You know, that's a mighty funny way of celebrating, kicking the garbage out of somebody. That's just, you know. Well, New Era got in the way. They're, they're small like that. In fact, we should probably put little bells around their necks so that we know where they are. Well, you know, let's agree to disagree on that. Let's, let's go ahead and move on to our PWA TV title match. Here we have the champ, Red Anderson, taking on the man from the District of Columbia, American oh, May. Oh, oh, oh. Allegedly from the District of Columbia. Now, I have good information. I have really good information that, that this guy, American Made, was actually a Washington intern for some California congressman, left Washington back in April, had a sex change operation, and started his wrestling career. You know that's not the truth, but, you know, nonetheless, fans, let's go ahead and, and get to this match, and, you know, we'll see. Wait, exactly. wait, wait, wait. I got to tell you who Cyrus's mystery partner is. Well, who is his mystery partner? Well, Kamish, we got the challenger getting ready to jump in the ring here. American Made. Yeah, American Made. whoop de doo hey, Where's your sense of uh, patriotic appreciation? I have told you a hundred times, any man who wears the American flag on his butt is not patriotic. His derriere. We're on television. I'm, I'm sorry, his derriere. His keister. I, I think you're just jealous, Kamish, because if you were to undertake a uh, costume change like that, perhaps you might be able to see all 50 states. What, what, what are you talking about? Nothing. Nice leapfrog there. And Arn's baby sister gets nailed with a clothesline. Oh, you know, I thought you two had put the bad blood behind you, uh, Mr. Electricity. Apparently uh, not. I just like ribbing the guy. He's all right. Yeah, after you put a dress on him. From what I heard, you thought he looked pretty good in a dress there, Chris Irish. What, are you kidding me? The guy could have been a sponsor for Frank Purdue Chicken. I mean, the guy's legs were so white, he shorted out one of the house lights. I'm not going to say he's white, but him and Larry Bird and Boris Becker, they go to the same tanning parlor. He's a commodian. I tell you. Call the match, Chris. What are we paying you for? You know, I'm not sure. I Sometimes I... Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. You hear the fans? They're, they're, they're shouting USA. That just proves that just proves that American made is not from the United States. He's Mexican. That doesn't They're shouting you SA! You SA! He's not Mexican. And this isn't a Cheech and Chong film. You know what I'm wondering though? Um, the enforcer there, uh, Red Anderson, is from Panama City, Florida. Panama why are they Red. chanting why are they chanting USA? <laughs> They're both from the USA. Supposedly. It's a patriotic crowd. Although I have to admit, last time I heard you went to Club La Vila, you didn't know what state you were in. I don't get that. Anderson backs his man in. Irish whip into the ropes with momentum. Reverse elbow smash down hard to the canvas. Goes American made. Why don't you just fire Chris Irish and let me I, do this, I, I should. I am so close to firing Chris Irish. It isn't even funny. So let me, let me get this straight. My uh, my job's in jeopardy here for you to hire another one of your cronies on. I mean, you've already got Sasso on the payroll. Hey, I'm no crony. I am the champion. He is the champion. You will refer to him as the champion. You know, me, you, and Sasso would sound really good on this show. Yeah, yeah, we, we would be great. Three amigos. Yeah, at least Sasso has a sense of humor. Sasso's sense of humor generally revolves around a lot of... Uh, homophobic jokes. Uh, as, at least they don't come off the, the Laffy Taffy rappers like yours do. Reverse chin lock applied on the canvas here by the television champion of the Pensacola Wrestling Alliance there, Red Anderson, the enforcer. Well, Mr. Electricity, I have to thank you for bringing the focus back to the match. I mean, so often you two uh, really like to uh, basically insult me. Number of elbows there to get out of it. Oh, big knee I'm going to go get some jello. Thank you. There's always room for Jello. Jello. Drop kick to the shoulder blades from Red Anderson. Taking a page out of my book there. I tell you, you know, it's a good thing that uh, Red Anderson is the size that he is, so that way he 
He has enough room for the word enforcer to go on the back of his tights. What is Milo de Brad doing here? He's uh, he's choking American Made, it looks like to well, me. Well, thank you. Now, see, he saw it. You didn't, did you? So what? You had what my attention. He was, he was looking at you. I was talking you. to him. You were talking to me. If maybe if you'd quit distracting me, I might be able to see more of the match. Hard under the buckle there goes the masked man, the guy with the sock on his face. Now, you know, some people said the uh, the problem that Red had in this match was he maybe got a little too arrogant. One thing I noticed is that he departed from his usual take a limb and work it over tactic, uh, that time-tested Anderson tactic. and The Anderson tradition. Pick a body true. part, stay on it. Good, solid wrestling. Snap mare. How many Andersons do you think there are? Uh, there are quite a few in the phone book. Rolling neck snap there, whiplash effect on uh, the guy with the sock on his head, American Made. You know, actually, that is not a sock. He actually took the French flag and made the mask out of it, just proving, once again, that he is not American. Viva la France. American Made trying to rally the fans behind him. Oh. Well, you know, speaking of Mexico, since you were saying SA or USA or whatever, he went south of the border with that headbutt. I knew that was coming. I'm kind of getting hungry for some Taco Bell. The enforcer, our television champion, with a high knee lift right to the side of the, the old bean there. You know, love him or hate him, I have to admit that the enforcer, Red Anderson, has been the best television champion in the PWA. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Yes, the two weeks that he held the championship were uh, a couple of great weeks indeed, weren't they? I, I think they were. They were good for me. Well, I'd have to say American Made having a real hard problem getting any sort of offense mounted so far. I got to hand it to Red Anderson. He's been doing really well lately. I mean, he's not exactly black sheep material, you know. He's not in the upper echelon of the PWA, but he's doing pretty well for himself, you know, with that television championship. I mean, he's not the heavyweight champion, obviously, because that's me. But, you know, he's, he's doing pretty well for himself. Well, you know, he's, you know, I, I kind of liken it to the black sheep being, you know, say the, the Corleone family and Red Anderson being the thug on the street corner. That's right, and of course you like to refer to yourself as the Don of the PWA. And he misses with the knee drop there. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? You know, somewhere, somewhere Louis Fingers is rolling over. Jimmy Hoffa is unearthing himself, but the way you two are butchering the New York accent. And a kick to the back of the thigh by American Made. American Made finally showing some offense here. The mass man trying to take out one of the wheels of the television champion. It's almost like he's taking a page out of the Anderson playbook here. Exactly right. And you know, we're going to see here, this is one of Red Anderson's textbook maneuvers, a toehold. Step over toehold, indeed. <laughs> Referee Bob Holly, no relation down there to check the shoulders of the television champion, Red Anderson. He's in perfect position. For what? to check the shoulders of the television champion, Red Anderson. Excuse me. And Anderson manages to power out of that. Look at the strength in those legs. You know you know what I think the difference in Anderson has been? I, I really think it has been Milo DeBrat. Absolutely. He's had a great effect on the career of uh, the enforcer, Red Anderson. And he's also signed old hardcore Chad Havoc along with Miss Phoenix into his stable. And they're doing really well also. Well, he is definitely starting to, to develop his own stable. And, and uh, you know, I'm just I'm anxious to see what he does with it. Well, American made there ducking way too early. Red Anderson had it scouted. We will have a raffle to, to you can put in your guess as to which nationality American made is. If you guess correctly. Nice maneuver there. The uh, sole of the boot right into the uh, old Adam's apple, right in the windpipe. Gotta love that one. That was me. That, that, that just cuts off your airflow. And that, you know, that's, oh. that's an important thing when you're in the in the ring is, is to make sure you have enough oxygen going through your body. Had a little train wreck there with American Made uh, clumsily running into the official and a nice spinning DDT. That's a devastating maneuver. Haven't seen that one in a while out of the uh, Anderson textbook maneuvers. And uh, Bob Holly, as a result of that collision, not able to make the count. 
Now, Arn's baby cousin had his man right there, didn't he? He, he did. He did. Whoa. Whoa. You see a schoolboy roll up. And Anderson oh. kicks out. American made trying to hold the tights there, but he couldn't quite reach him. He wasn't trying to hold the tights. Point of the boot right in the old chin. That'll stop your clock. You know, there, there's something very interesting about these two wrestlers. I don't know if you've made the connection. Red Anderson drives a Harley Davidson. Okay. Harley Davidsons are American made. Correct. American made is not American. Fans, there's no truth to that rumor. I'm just following the train of logic here. So how do we get to Kevin Bacon? As you see, Anderson now shoots his man in for another one of his spine busters. That busters. is two spine busters in a row. Go for the pin. Go for the pin. It's it's taped there, PJK. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I know you're getting into the action. I am too. It's very exciting action right here every Thursday night at 9 p.m. on WBQP, the station that cares. Chris, you got to plug the station every now and then, buddy. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Nasal. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Chris, who's your daddy? My daddy. No. Wait, Who's your daddy? Goodness. Oh! I cannot believe this. That's just... right. PWA new TV champion, American Made. With a small package, nonetheless. Ladies and, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Milo DeBrat and Red Anderson are crying right now. So I think we're going to cut from this footage and go back to the studio. They're still crying. They, they're still this crying. is taped and we're, they're still crying. They're still crying. How'd you like that? American Made winning the PWA TV title. Looks like you sanctioned it just in time. Well, uh, you know, I'll give credit when credit is due. Let's face it, Red Anderson got overconfident. He he went for two spine busters, decided, you know, instead of going for the pin right then like he should have, he went for the third spine buster. American Made was ready for it, rolled him up one, two, three for the pin. I, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Now, you know. Maybe American Made doesn't have this background as a Washington intern. I don't know. That's just the information I was given, but I think he's Canadian. Well, nonetheless, we have a new TV champion, which leads us into our next matchup, our second title match of the card. And of course, that's the champion, Mr. Electricity from Black Sheep Incorporated, taking on Cornbread. Well, hold on, hold on. Let's get one thing straight. When you introduce Mr. Electricity, okay, you should do it the correct way. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the PWA heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Electricity versus Cornbread. But anyway, let me tell you who Cyrus's mystery partner is. Cyrus's mystery partner tonight, Mr. Electricity! Hey, that's me. Is that you? That's that, me. That is you. You know, I'm really surprised that you, you're, you know, now that you joined the Black Sheep, that you're still saying you're from Pensacola, Florida. Oh, were you saying something, Chris? I, I, I was yeah, temporarily you, good night. Were the, were the headlights too high in there? Or? Do, do, do you have her phone number? I do. Just sometimes could you have her call me or something? Just... She doesn't have to say anything. She can just breathe. Well, fans, as you probably noticed by now, this is the PWA champion, Jerry Reiner, Mr. Electricity, joined by the Black Sheep and NWS Sasso. Hey, let you know, give respect where respect is due, Mr. Irish. Jerry Reiner is the heavyweight champion of the world in Pensacola. And it looks like he's sponsored by Coke. And here comes the lumbering oaf. Now, fans, I'll, I'll admit, Cornbread is not going to win any Menza contests, but he is an effective wrestler. He's just a big, nice guy. He, he's not going to win any intelligence contests either. No, that's for sure. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer, folks. Well, he doesn't, I, even, doesn't even belong in the ring with me. I am a technical master. Well, this, you know, then this should be a good contest, good challenge for you. Definitely a clash of styles. You know, it, it, this is really an unnecessary match. 
Jerry Reiner, I sat there, I witnessed you beating him to a pulp already once before. Correct. I don't, I don't understand why we had to do this. Rematch. Now, what maneuver was that, uh, Mr. Reiner? I'm just luring him in right here. All part of my master plan. Watch this. Pow! Right in the chops. Well, it didn't seem like it had much effect, and down goes Mr. Electricity. Hey, hey. Now, there's a rule that we even stated that says you cannot hurt Jerry Reiner's face. What are you, there's no timeout in wrestling. Stop begging. I wasn't begging. I was trying to lead him down the primrose path and sucker him into a false sense of my bean slapping off the... God, that hurts. Well, come on. Wait, so what was going through your mind right here? Ow, ow, ow. Sometimes you have to take a little bit of punishment to sucker the guy in and make him think he has the upper hand. See, right now, Cornbread thinks he has the upper hand, but he's wrong. Well, you're lying on the concrete. I, you know, I hate to state the obvious, which is actually what I do, but you're laying on the concrete, so how are you, uh, you know, luring him in? Hey, Chris Irish, I don't need you wait, 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 wait. to make a fool out of me. He's not like... He has that woman giving him a massage right there. That's not lying on the concrete. I would get out of the ring for that. That's actually the whole reason I took all that punishment. Was just so Nikki would rub my back. That, that, that's a good reason. I would do that. I would take that kind of punishment for that. And it was well worth it, I have to tell you. Why you didn't want Sasso to give you a massage? Mm, no. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, that's your. That's for you, Kamish. Wait, what do you mean by that? He, it... Hey, guys, let's pay attention to me. All right, well, uh, all eyes on me. Not really sure what you said to referee Benjamin Dover there. I told him to check him. You know, if your tights were on Red Anderson, Black Sheep could be one word. A beautiful drop kick right to the kneecap and another. Well, good precision. Good strategy here. Precision in action there. And now you're just kind of caught there. I have to admit, this is kind of surreal with you. You're doing commentary on your own match. Hey, there's me kicking the guy. Hey, there's me jumping on him. Hey, there's me getting my butt kicked. Oh, sorry. Now look at this flagrant violation of the rules here. My throat cheating. is across the middle he rope. Is, he, he's cheating. I see it. You I see it. this. I see this cheating. You know, there's, there, to me, there's nothing wrong with cheating, but the fans all cheer for this guy, and he's supposed to be a fine, upstanding citizen. He's a, he's a convicted criminal, for goodness sake just breaking the rules flagrantly right in front of the official, kicking me in the keister. That was totally unnecessary. Yeah, I think it was effective. It, you know, obviously you didn't like it. And he just God, runs into you like a freight train. I was about to say, that's big splash. Oh, that's like a, a Mack truck running into you. How'd the ribs feel after that? No comment. And uh, you're, you're there, it looks like you're struggling for air. Oh, what is... Oh. He, he had his foot up on the rope. He, the only reason he had his foot on the rope is because Sasso grabbed it. No. Sasso was just pointing he, out to the referee that my foot was on the rope. He was making sure the referee saw that. By the way, who dressed Sasso this week? I did. I mean, I, no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I fell down. You fell that down. That was an accident. Well, nice drop kick there by Mr. Electricity, but you kind of bounced off him series of roundhouses with well, a guy only weighs 567 and a half pounds for goodness sakes nice spinning back kick on the 300 plus pound monster i think he weighs a lot more than that see this is how you take a big man down to size you work on his wheels you take the wheels out from under him good sound strategy i have to have to admit very smart ring maneuvers there by uh the champ as he likes to be called it and took every bit of strength I had to muscle his big keister over there. Drop kick back, back of the shoulder blades. You I was going to say, I was impressed that you were able to get him over. It, it, it was probably even more difficult because he didn't have any hair to pull to get the leverage going. Exactly. Hard kicks to the abdomen there. It's like kicking a haystack. It actually hurt my foot to kick that big son of a gun. There's no reason he should have been in the ring with me. He didn't go through the, the gauntlet and beat all of the black sheep like we laid out, Patrick J. Kelly. I don't understand why the championship committee gave him a title match this Sunday. You know, even though I'm the commissioner, sometimes the championship committee overrules even me. And I, I mean, it, it really, really distresses me at times, especially when it has such a huge effect on my 
on my wrestling organization. It's that, called a democracy. That's a disgrace. This is not a democracy. Oh, hey, I watch, forgot. It's a watch this, guys. This is beautiful. I Liner could stand top. on the top rope for four hours if I had to. My balance is cat-like. Beautiful, beautiful textbook maneuver. Did you see that, Chris? I I, I saw it. You know, uh, hey, that was obviously a three count. There. That that looked like a three count to me. That looked like Cornbread got the shoulder up. Referee Benjamin Dover there, blowing the call. And you're going up top again. And it looks like you went to the well one too many times. Just field off that top rope. I am, I am just totally flabbergasted at that move. Look at him, look at him choking him. He's choking him. Look. Do you see that, Chris Irish? No, I don't see it. Uh, oh, I must have something in my contacts. Uh huh. It was good when Red Anderson did it, but it's not good when Cornbread does it. Well, nice agility, good ring sense, and the lightning strike super kick from the champ. Now, if you'll notice, this guy's so tall that I was only able to kick him in the neck area. I couldn't really get all the way up to his face. That's why those super kicks that I'm so well known for, and I am the master of the super kick, mind you. That's why they weren't effective. But hey, this hey. Oh, now it's effective after somebody got a hit with a sign. What? What are you talking about? What the hell is he doing? What are you talking about? Exactly. What is he doing? Well, the winner of the match is uh, Mr. Electricity, Jerry Reiner, the champion. Still the champion. Still Am the I champion. right? Champion. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. It was a DQ win. Yes, you're still the champion because, as fans know, the title can't change on a disqualification. Now, look That's at this interference. Matters. Look at this interference. Well, the match was over, so it doesn't really matter. Uh-huh. It sure matters when it's one of your favorites. Well, we see uh, Cyrus, New Era, American Made, Bubba Brazil Jr. all coming to the rescue. Well, all that's important is that I still have the title. You still have the gold, and you will keep the gold. Let's get out of here. Next match, please. Mr. Electricity retaining the title with a little bit of uh, dubious help there from the Black Sheep. Dubious? It wasn't dubious. I, I, you know, his friends, the Black Sheep, came down to assist him when he needed help. I wish I had friends like that. There's no reason that he needs help, though. It's a one-on-one -on -one match for the championship. Well, look, Cornbread you know, has been known, I mean, he's a criminal. He's a convicted felon, okay? They were just watching his back. I applaud the Black Sheep for coming out and helping Jerry Reiner. Well, thank goodness we had some folks in the locker room that came out to help save Cornbread from this brutal beating that the Black Sheep were laying on. Oh, wham, all I ever hear you do is cry about Cornbread. Cornbread this, Cornbread that. Let me tell you something, Jerry Reiner is who we should be talking about. His title reign in the PWA is very reminiscent of, 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 of a legend in the wrestling world. Oh, I guess. The Mongolian Stomper, is that who you're going to... Well, yeah. The Mongolian Stomper was a great champion. Jeez. No respect. Let's get on. Let me... Ladies and gentlemen, our main event is right around the corner. And let me tell you something. We've got the Black Sheep going up in a non-title match against Cyrus and his mystery partner. Here he is. Cyrus's mystery partner, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Scott Armstrong! No! No! Wait, he doesn't look like the Mongolian Stomper. He doesn't look like Joe LaDuke either. But I, I thought he was going to be the Mongolian Stomper. Well, as usual, your sources are wrong. Haven't we already said that the show's tape? Well, oh yeah. Never mind. You're just, you're still in such a state of disbelief. Over the coup that I pulled, aren't you? I'm I'm pissed off about the coup that you pulled. Who's who's whose coup did you pull exactly? Now look at this. Before the magic begins, look, Bobo Brazil Jr. is in there illegally interfering. This is a travesty of justice. This, this is complete interference. I am just absolutely appalled at this whole travesty. I'm sorry, Paul, who? Are you saying Barbie doll? No, I'm trying to get these idiots to chant Bobby doll and get behind the black sheep. I don't think that's going to happen. That's because those fans are ignorant slobs who, who can't even 
washed behind their own ears. Survey says no. And apparently Cyrus is going to chicken out here because he's scared of Danny Rowland, and he's going to tag in Scott Armstrange. Well, where's Rowland going then? Oh, I forgot. This is part of the psychological warfare, right? Exactly. No, Danny Rowland's just trying to stretch. He, he didn't get a good pre-match warm-up there. Maybe he stretched too hard. He's got a lot of holes in his shorts. Hey, we're the champions, okay? We wrestle on our own time at our own pace. We hold the championship gold, buddy boy. That's right. I forgot. You're, you're the one who came up with the golden rule. He who holds the gold makes the rules. Is that it? That, something, something like that. That's it. That's it. That's not something that you would know about, though, you babbling non-athlete, you. Hey, hey. Okay. He's not an athlete either. He's an athletic supporter. Yeah, he is an athlete. Oh, he supports... Yeah. Hey, wait, hold on. Wait. And what's it? Well, I he, think fans can pretty much figure out what Scott was saying there. He's making lewd gestures to my valet is what he's doing, and I didn't take too kindly to that. Well, she was smiling the whole time. That, she was that, not. That is disgusting. I can't believe I just saw that. I'm going to have nightmares tonight. Maybe I can get uh, Sasso to come over. He'll... Apply a nice soothing salve or balm, and everything will be okay. Hey, that sounds nice. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, here we have Scott Armstank uh, pushing Roland back into the corner. Obviously pulling the hair for added leverage there illegally. He was obviously pulling the hair. Collar and elbow tie up center of the ring. Both men jockeying for position here in this tag team matchup. The main event standing side headlock applied by Mr. Old School Black Sheep Danny Rowland. Are you taking notes there, Chris? Is that the best you can do? That sounded good. Thank you. Yeah. You are so fired next week. <laughs> oh, you, know, you sound exactly like that guy that used to be on The Simpsons. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You're just, you're just jealous. Somebody who's green with envy because I'm so multi-talented. Uh, no, my pants are green. Big Whoa. shoulder tackle there. Nice leapfrog there by Scott Armstrong. Hip toss and a drop kick. And by the way, it's Armstrong, not Armstank. Don't Sully the good name of these champions. I'm sorry, Armstrange. He's did, right. Did you is. say Gordon Sully is in the house? What? He's here in spirit. Katie, bar the door. Well, this is definite Pier Sixer here. And you see me there. I'm trying to tell Bobby Dahl, let's just go. I mean, this isn't a championship match. There's no reason for us to get in there and embarrass the Armstrongs any more than we have to. Let's just leave. But these two guys had too much intestinal fortitude, too much dignity, too much respect for themselves, too much pride to, get it, to just leave and, and not win this match. Fair and square. Too much pancreatitis. What was Danny Rowland just doing? He, he was in a haze or a stupor, I guess. One too many right hands upside no, no, the no, head. No, no, no. He was lulling his, uh, his his opponent there into a false sense of security. And hey, that's what I was doing the quarterback earlier. <laughs> exactly. I got two words for you there, Chris Irish. Big daddies. Well, I got uh, two words for you, but it's a family show, so uh, yeah, that's right. This is I a family show on, on on WBQP, the, the station, station that, that cares. cares. Big accidental there from Cyrus, the man from Groom Lake, Area 51. Did you say nice Groom Lake? Ringer. No, I said Groom Lake. You know, Groom, I, Groom Lake. I'm sorry, but all the reports I've read state that uh, Area 51 does not exist. Speaking of Groom Lake, somebody needs to groom Cyrus's hair. It's, it's a mangled mess. It's probably it's probably its own wildlife refuge. I was, I was about to say we, we should probably shouldn't groom his hair because of all the animals that we'd uh, be destroying. Look well, at that blatant hard right hand right to the side of the Did, face. You got it. You got it, buddy. Blatant hard right hand. Completely legal. How, how do you figure it's a clenched fist? Well, uh, Bobby Dahl, what's, what's he trying to do there? Well, you know, Scott Armstank there was, was shaking his butt in, in Bobby Dahl's face. He took offense to that. You sure he was taking offense to it? I would take offense to it. 
You know, what's amazing is that the word Armstrong can fit across Scott Armstrong's butt, just like the enforcer fits across Red's butt. What is this with you and Sasso and this fascination with butts? It's not a fascination. I'm just stating a fact. I mean, for a while, you even hired a, a wannabe manager named Harry Butts. Excuse me, Harold Butts. Let's not mention that, shall we? That's a darker, a darker past of the PWA that we'd like to forget. Nonetheless, Roland getting the shoulder up there. And you want to tell me how he did that, Kamish? Come on. I'm waiting for it. Which part? How, how did Danny Roland get his shoulder up? Uh, he lifted it. Uh, great. How'd you expect? Possession intestinal Big push. Look at that double team maneuver. An illegal double team maneuver, I might add. Oh, he got paintbrushed so bad, he's going to have to go to work for Merritt's. And an Irish whip here by Cyrus. Look out, the moron jumps into the air and lands flat on his back. Roland had that move scouted. And Bobby Dahl making his way into the ring. Kick to the gut, clubbing right forearm. You know, I've just got to say, with the, the advent of the entrance of Scott Armstrong and the possible entrance, I mean, these guys are like cockroaches of the rest of the Armstrong clan. I just got to say that I sure am glad that my championship is firmly around my waist, and I know that Patrick J. Kelly will always protect my interests. That's absolutely right. Well, you know, what, what's Bobby Dahl here? He's pulling the shirt up. I mean, he's not Cam Neely. He's definitely not Mario Lemieux. This isn't hockey. You don't pull somebody's shirt up to punch him? Or even Patrick Wall. No, I'm talking about hockey players that I like. Solid right hand there by Bobby Dahl. Hey, fighting fire with fire. That's right. If Scott Armstrong's going to close his fist, Bobby Dahl's going to do it as well. If old Scott Armstrong, the mini-me of the old Georgia jawjacker, can do it, then we can do it. Now that's just, you know, that's just wrong. Each Armstrong is individual. They have their own strengths. And, you know, to sit there and, and make fun of him and his family, I I just think that's a real cheap shot, you know, Mr. Saying, Reiner. Saying, saying each Armstrong has their own strengths and their own characteristics, that's like looking at three different cockroaches and saying, yeah, they all have their own individual characteristics. Yeah, this one's antenna is a little longer than this one's. Russian leg sweep. They're all Armstrongs. They're I, all just, I just can't believe there's Armstrongs in the PWA. It just seems wrong. It's like we're in an alternate reality or a, a time rift or something. Or a really bad episode of the Twilight Zone. Well, I, I think it's great, and uh, I hope we continue to see it. By the way, uh, Chris Irish, did you get your Scott Armstrong autograph after the show? Uh, no, I already have one, actually. Yeah, I you figured. big mark. Get him out of there, referee. Get that Armstrong out of there. Hard boot to the ribs there from old school Danny Rowland, the man from Destin. Bobby Dahl going up top. Oh, good. They're going into announce mode. And Cyrus is in a world of hurt on the canvas. This match is turning into a real slobber knocker. Hey, this is a family show, okay? At least nobody is wearing the crimson mask. That's we can true. all be thankful for that. Well, you know, this Sunday at the ladder match, I can assure you, there's going to be some crimson masks all around. There's going to be some lawn gnomes bleeding buckets. That's right. I can't wait to see that. You know, it may not turn out the way you fellas think. Sure it will. And here we see Bobby Dahl with a blatant choke. It's a front chancery or front face lock, and uh, referee Bob ref Holly is right in there. The referee's right there. If it was a choke, he'd call a choke. You know, I'm starting to one up. Really starting to wonder. Was it a full moon that night? <laughs> That's what I wanted to see when I turned on WBQB. Scott Armstrong's big <laughs> keister. Did you just say keister? Let's try to be professional about this, Mr. Reiner. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. What is Sasso doing out there? Sasso is taking lessons. He's putting the boots to Cyrus with the rest of us. He's officially a member of the Black Sheep now, you know. Thanks well, to Patrick J. Kelly. Just because he wears your pants doesn't make him a member. And Cyrus bullying slowly and very methodically getting Danny Rowland back into the corner. Oh, no, oh, no. And he makes a tag, and here comes Scott I didn't see a tag. There's no tag there. Uh, of course not, because you bought off Bob Holly. Hey, hey, look, he didn't buy anybody off. If the referee doesn't see it, it never happened. Just like uh, the, the Patrick J. Kelly rule. Well, I didn't see that. I, I mean, it was right in front of my face, and 
And I, you know, I laughed at it, but I didn't see it. Oh, boy. Standing drop kick there. Nowhere to, for Cyrus to go, but back into the turnbuckle, absorbing all the shock of that blow from Bobby Dahl. And what are we going to see here? It looks like a sidewalk slam. Oh, and Cyrus landed right there on the lower occipital protuberance. What? The lower occipital protuberance. Have you been going through the Sally Struthers study at home courses again? What was that old hospital show that was on? That's what you sound like, that old guy. What was something, MD? Pepper John. There MD. you go. I think you were referring to Marcus Welby. <laughs> Lateral press and a cover from Danny Rowland. Only a count of two there. Cyrus with a fighting heart, spirit, and determination, or maybe it's just stupidity. I think it's stupidity. Well, you know, uh, actually, that was that was a very admirable, nice call there by uh, Mr. Electricity. Of course, it might have been gas, too. So, Big suplex here by Rowland. Just snaps him over. All right, here we go for the cover. And you are not going to pin Cyrus with a lax cover like that. Especially when you consider the intense hatred that exists between Bobby Dahl and Cyrus. And now I guess the black sheep as well. Absolutely. I can't stand him. And again, oh, no. rolling being edge back into the corner. And it, of course, Bob Holly. There was no tag. I didn't see a tag. Did you see a tag? Looks well, like a misdirection play in basketball. This was your equivalent of the no-look pass. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. It was the no-look tag. Yeah, exactly. Irish Holly, whip hard no into look. the turnbuckle. Head of steam by Bobby Dahl, but nobody home. And they're both both men are down. And Bob Holly begins his count. Bobo Brazil on the outside trying to uh, rally the fans behind his charges. Look at him over there trying to grab some of that glory he used to have when he was in the ring. Look out, here comes Scott Armstrong. The nice curly shuffle move. Series of right hands just laying waste to the black sheep. Illegal fists. Pow, right, in the, right in the mouth. And at this point, I had had Pow, right enough the of mouth. the illegal tactics of Scott Armstrong. I had had enough. And so you decided to get involved, but you missed. Now that is what a super kick looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners, Scott Armstrong and Cyrus. I, the travesty of justice, I'll have you know, I am the master of the super kick, and I will put that to the test oh, any day of the week. Don't this, call Johnny Cochran. This was a travesty. Scott Armstrong, Cyrus's mystery partner. Let me tell you something, okay? Scott Armstrong, you... You blindsided me with this whole Scott Armstrong thing. You snuck him into the PWA, and I object. I object to this. I'm telling you something. The only reason Armstrong and Cyrus won is because Bobby Dahl was not 100%. He had an injured thumb. You, know, you could plainly, plainly see the wrap around it. He had an injured thumb. That's the only reason they won. Well, you know what? I'm glad to see that we've got Scott Armstrong here and the Pensacola Wrestling Alliance. Finally, maybe we can put a stop to this black sheep interference, this reign of terror. It's time. It is time for this to end. Look, it's not going to end. In fact, we're going to be back Sunday night, 7 p.m. at the PWA Arena in Brownsville, right next door to the Brownsville Army Navy store. Scott Armstrong says he's going to be back. We'll just see about that.